very simple technique to use using a larger time frame to enter off of a smaller or larger Renko to enter off of a smaller Renko. Um, like I said, this is a very, very neat little setup. And uh, I'm going to show you the short side. Then I'm going to show you the long side setup to show when the market's in a stronger or weaker position. So uh, we know down here, this is a 140-40 chart. Um, th this is how I like to look at the NQ. Now what I'm doing also, I'm going to be going over um, live educational setups. And I have to get with Gerald with it, but I, I'm going to start doing it uh, five days a week. Um, I'll, I'll get with him and see what um, see how I want to do this. But uh, probably beginning of uh, middle of July or starting August 1st, um, I'm going to be um, looking at setups, getting on the mic before they happen on the NQ, on the uh, crude oil, um, on the Russell 2000, uh, these markets that I look at on the S&P. So it's something that um, um, I, I'm going to be actually going over it on educational entries uh, in the room. So um, and so I'll let you know the when we're going to start that. Um, but it's going to be where the New York opens up, and we're looking at setups all the way to around 11 o'clock, 11:30 or so. Then I'll fire back on at around two or 1:30 or two, all the way into the close. So it's something that um, that uh, I'll let you know how we're going to do it, but um, you know, Gerald doesn't necessarily have to be in the background with those. Um, I will be doing that, so I'll let you guys uh, know on that. Um, uh, I will be going over educational setups before they happen, and here, here's how I look at a setup. Okay, and you know, I was with a member, had lunch with a member Sunday, uh, actually, and we were going over this. It's a long-term member that we have in 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 with our software and we talked about looking at weakness selling weakness and buying strength in the market and this is one way to do it and this is how if you're a Nasdaq trader you like the NQ if you like the crude oil if you like the Russell 2000 and you can do the micros um, the same thing on the micros you can see the big contract or the micros I'm gonna show you how I spot these moves before they happen and that's why I want to get in here um, probably a thinking in the middle of July or the beginning of August and Gerald will send a notice out uh, but um, I, I won't start as early as 815 um, I like when the market opens up to trade these setups at 930 so I'll probably fire right it in on the mic around 9 915 in the morning five days a week um, and we're going to be going over uh, uh, live bullets live setups before they happen I want to show you I look at multiple different markets um, the NQ CL um, uh, crude oil I look at gold I actually look at uh, the Russell 2000. Um, I don't trade as much Dow as much, but um, and then we'll uh, go over the S&P obviously also. So uh, we will be going over that stuff, and I'm going to show you before uh, these happen, and then we'll show you how I like to do this. So here's one specific setup. So we'll go over those educational entries coming up, um, like I do currently, but it's going to be more of like an all-day thing. Um, and I want to do that for a whole month while people get adjusted to the software. So let's uh, let's look at uh, when the market's in a stronger weaker position. This is one of my favorite setups. We all know I like momentum setups, but there's a way to take these snapback trades. Or every since uh, we opened the room, I call it a rubber band snapback. Uh, some of you guys like to call it, uh, you know, a uh, a coiled market that snaps, or you know, um, a slingshot. I know some of you guys like called a slingshot. So I'll call it a slingshot a trade out of the FCR just so we can understand the overall setup. So this is in the PDF um, on this specific setup um, on the momentum and FCR snap or we, what we call maybe a slingshot where it price gets coiled and then it rebounds. So first of all, this is the NQ 14440 zone trend chart. There's a couple things that are necessary for trend. Uh, you want to stay with zone trend. These zones are very, very accurate uh, based upon our 30-year back test with it. Uh, so we got the zones pretty much where we want to have them. You know, the zones, they like to stay. If the zone is red, we're looking for sell setups. If we're looking for buys, uh, green, we're looking for buy, buy retracement. So very simple. On your 140, that's one part of it. We have my signal lines here below. Here's a second part of it. And here's something that um, is very important with the zones. I have uh, two signal lines down here, and you traders know what they what they are. Um, when they both over overlap of each other, 
uh, meaning if you get your smaller signal line and your larger signal line and they're overlapping. So right at this inflection point, right where my cursor is at, when that is overlapping, you have hard trend in place with zone. If you are if you are red zone on a 14040, you're in the weakest position of the market right here for short setups. So yesterday, and I'll show you how to enter on these trades. Yesterday, from three o'clock to three o seven, you're in the weakest part of the market, and this is where the market just tanked. Vice versa, when we turn green zone and and both overlapped, both signal lines overlapped, and they are pegged above, you're in the strongest part of the market, meaning you're in the strongest position in the market. I call it a stronger position or a weaker position. I have a lot of setups like this in the PDF that I did for you guys. So this is one of my one of my favorite setups. Now what I like to do on the NQ, and I like uh, and other markets vary obviously with 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 frames, but 140 is a really good zone for trend. You know, not so great if you're looking for smaller stops for entry, but what you do is you look for the trend on the NQ 140, and I'm going to show you the 125, 125 for entries with this trend. So what we want to try to do when the market is red zone, and you see the market just going down and my two signal lines are pegged and they'll be pegged all the way on top of each other you'll see them sandwiched on top of each other that's why I like to overlay on top of each other you're in a hard trend down this is the weakest position of the market vice versa an alert for traders to get ready to go long on momentum trades or what 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 we can call slingshot trades where the market retraces on our smaller signal line for the continuation you know if, if they are pegged on top of each other above you're in the strongest position of the market so this is the PDF I want to, uh, that I'll come out with an updated software you guys are getting this weekend that I want to make sure you understand the setup. So my favorite setups, and um, uh, it's a neat way to understand to keep you on the right side of the market. So that's the first thing. So let's just look at an example when the market's in a downtrend. We got both signal lines pegged below, both signal lines pegged above. So when we're looking for entries then, then what we need to do is we need to go to a smaller Rinko chart. Now the smaller Rico chart will allow us to have smaller stops, obviously, but it allows us to get a retracement. This is such a long Rinko chart, you see we're all red, red Rinkos all the way down. You have no idea when to short this market anywhere down through here and where to buy the market anywhere up through here. So you're sort of stuck trying to figure out, if you just trade off this chart, where to sell this retracement or to buy this retracement. So what we can do is we go to a smaller Rinko. Now this is what I'd like to use. I'd like to use the 140 and the 125 together. Now the one here's the here's where the market was in a downtrend. Now let's go back to this one first. So here we started, right? Here we started at 1501, started this weaker position all the way to 1507, and then the stronger position was 1508 all the way to 15 almost what 22. So when it's in the weaker position, you want to start focusing when those oscillators uh, overlap, our signal lines overlap, and our zone is down. Now we're gonna look for the slingshot momentum setups. Now this is what you wanna do here. So 501 is here. Here's where we got the trend change on the 140. So the 140 trend change is here. You immediately see the market goes into a weaker position on the 125, 125. This is the 125, 125 on the, on the NASDAQ. I don't like going smaller than this on the NASDAQ, like the 120 or the 113. It's way too fast a price action, and it gives you a lot of false different moves. I like the 125 or 130 if you're going to do this against the 140 trend. But if you look, both signal lines got over top of each other. They are sandwiched. They are directly right on top of each other, and they are sandwiched for a hard trend down. The market starts moving down. Now, we're already down on the 140. You can see it just cranking down, red, 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 zone, red. We're pegged on the signal line, and this is what you want to watch for. I like putting these charts beside each other, so you're pegged on the signal line, and this is something I'm going to do when I call these educational trades out before they come out on these various different markets. What I like to see is I like to see it pegged all the way down below or pegged all the way up, and I'm going to say if you're in a stronger, weaker position in that market, let's look for the slingshot, FZR, or the momentum setup. That's what's going to set the trade up. And if you watch this setup, if you just set this trade up on your own chart today, you're going to see the NQ has around five to five to ten trades a day like this from 9:30 to four o'clock. Um, some of them are, are you, you look at them, you're like, wow, that's pretty impressive. They are they're, they're, they're neat. So um, you know, you'll have to look at that um, after we get done with this video and check it out. But so here's yesterday, we're in a weaker position on the 140. 
We're in a weaker position also on the 125. Market starts cranking down. We're trying to get short the market. So where do you short? We know that if we stay below 65, at this level 65, then we are what? We look for a sell retracement, meaning look for a momentum setup. That happened there. We, we start getting a retracement. Is it below my shallow zone? Yes, it is. This is called a momentum setup in a weaker position in the market. The market just gets cranked to the downside. Now, this is where you can have your ATM machine on your chart trader. Um, if you guys need uh, need uh, settings on that, I'm actually putting settings into the PDF to give you a little idea. If you'd like to trade the NQ, um, where you can have, if you trade two contracts or what have you, or three or four, or whatever you do in the micros, I, I have a way to trail these pretty good on the ATM uh one step, two step, and three step process. So just throw me an email, or actually no, I'll just put in the PDF for you guys so you can have an idea of, and you can adjust the way you want to adjust it. But right here, you take the first off, breaking plus one will come after I get 20 ticks, I go break even plus one, and then it just trails automatically until it gets stopped out. So that's the first trade right there that is called a Momo. These are the trades I'm gonna go over. It's, they're very simple to see. They're, way, they're a very leading indicator on my zones leading indicator down here on my signal lines, how I like to use them. We use the signal lines totally different than what the market uses. I don't look for overbought, oversoldness. Uh, that's where counter trend traders get caught. I look, I look to sell, I'm looking to short low, buy lower, buy a high, sell higher, which is totally counter, uh, uh, counter of the way that the public does. So we don't like to counter trend trade the market. So there's the Momo. Then we get, and this is what's called a slingshot. This is where the market slings up. Now, now, here's a great way to do this. And now, you, can, you guys can adjust it how you want to adjust it. So that's my Momo, right? Our trend's still down all the way. So you can see on the 140.40, my trend's still down to, what, 15.07. So we got 15.07 to keep selling retracements. I mean, we are pegs out. So here at 15.07 is the end of the cycle. So 15, almost 15.08 all the way over here. So we can still keep selling retracements. All right, so we, we come up to the next setup. The oscillator, this is called a slingshot. The market's pegged down, right? We are pegged. Both are both uh, signal lines are on top of each other on the on the longer 140-40, and it's pegged right here down also. Watch the smaller signal line come up. It must get above 80 for a slingshot. It has to get above 80. Once it gets above 80, it must get back below 40. Once it goes below 40, you have a momentum slingshot trade in the market. Why 40? Well, we already know that I've, you guys seen hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of trades that I send out um, on my setup, on my momentum setup. I love 40, and I love below 65 for sells, above 40, 40 for buys. Well, what happens is if this market, because the market will do this, and you can see when trend changes come. So let's say the market starts going down like this, right, on a retrace, starts going down. And it starts going down on my on my signal line also. Right? It starts going down and then it comes down to 40. And all of a sudden you get a green bar reversal. For you traders that trade the software with a little bit more experience, that's a buy setup and that's a trend change possibly going through changing before it even trend changes on here. Why? Because the oscillator stayed above 40, my signal line. So you can pretty much see. If it turns a green bar here, and I'm saying above 40, that's a good shot at the market. Stop loss two ticks below the swing low, or two two candles back. It should shoot right straight through. And we're going to go over this in some in, in in live trading as it as it works. And I'll show you examples. But what we want to do, the reason I say break 40 on a slingshot, is that we don't want it to come down to 40 and bounce, because it happens. You'll see it come up to this zone. You'll get a green bar reversal, a red bar reversal. A green bar will come in. It'll hit 40 in a stronger position and it'll crank up and it'll just trend change. So this way, this technique, or the way I like to do it, is once it shoots through this 40, 20 zone, you, are, you, you got a momentum snapback trade, all right? If you get in earlier, what I'm finding with this setup, if you try to time it earlier, and you try to get in right when it crosses below 80, this could trend change on you and come down to 40, trend change, and shoot right through. So I like it actually breaking 40 on a slingshot sell, and then I like it breaking through 65 on a buy. I'll show you the buy setup next, okay? So that was a slingshot trade. We'll call it a slingshot. Make sure.
because you're, the, the, the signal light is slinging up and it's slinging back down. And make sure your zone is intact. Your zone, you don't want to go into a deeper zone, I mean outside of the uh, outside zone, because then you are going to get into some trouble because it possibly can trend change. So you'll see them come up here. You'll see around, like I said, five to ten trades a day like this. Um, you know, some less, some more, uh, depending on the day. But you'll see some of the largest runners of the day, no matter what market you trade. I don't care what market you look at. It has this type of setup. It has these two characteristics. You got big zone down on larger Renko. You get your peg below uh, a zero, and you're pegged above a hundred. So. And then you have the retracement on the smaller Renko size to fire in like this also. And I'll go over the S&P in a second also. So that's the NASDAQ. That's what you look on the NASDAQ today. Let's look at the buy setup. The buy setup is just the opposite. Now I'm in a stronger position, right? Uh, both signal lines where my crosshair is, uh, they're right on top of each other. They're, they are right exactly on top of each other. I'm talking right at 100. It's pegged at 100. Stronger position, look for buy setups. Well, this is a larger Renko size, so you're going to incorporate larger stops. So we can check down to a smaller Renko. So let's take out, look at the time frame yesterday, 1508 until what, 1521. You're looking for buy setups on the smaller Renko. So 1508 to 1521, there we trend change. So here, 1508, right here, to 1521, we're looking for buy setups because we're pegged on our larger frame, larger Renko. There's 1521. We're looking for buy subs all the way to there. So this is this is our this is our time window of opportunity right here. So as we start moving up, all right. Here's a slingshot right here. As we, this is when it started trend changing right here. Here's your first slingshot right here. Your slingshot. You're in your zone. The zone's got to be green. They got to match green for green, red for red. There's your slingshot trade. What's the oscillator do? What's what signal line do? It pulls back all the way. Now, this doesn't have to be pegged above above uh, 80 or 20. Just your larger frame does, right? But look how we come back below. Now you come back below 20. Now I want to shoot back through 65. Because what, what don't I want the market to do? And this is how I thought about this. I thought about this over and over again. Because what was happening was, was on trades that reverse, what happens is you come out of the out of the zone. You'll come down to the zone, and you'll bounce out of the zone, right, with a green bar reversal. And then all of a sudden, a red bar reversal closes, and it shoots right through the low, and it trend changes. Well, the more I thought about it, because I already back tested this. We back tested this 30 years, you know, um, so we knew already that the 40 and 65 lines are very, very great line to use in these zones. And so they're very, very they're, they're accurate when they're together like that. So what we want to do then is we want to uh, try to avoid it retracing into the zone, going up a little bit and then crashing down through. Well, you can do that by using the slingshot method. So what you can do is a slingshot on a slingshot. What you can do is let it retrace below 80, right? then come up through 65. But the zone's got to hold because you don't want to hurt the integrity of the zone because the zone is a shallow retracement. And shallow retracements are very powerful for continuations. So this slingshot right here, you got below 80. Right there when you cross this 65, you're buying high, higher, but you're looking for the continuation move because you don't want to get caught in a trend change, right? So the more I thought about this, and I kept, and then I apply, I applied it to the charts. It's one of my favorite setups because what I'm doing is, is I'm allowing the 40 and 65 to be my momentum buys. I'm also allowing them to show me when a failure is going to come in place. So what I'm doing is I'm, 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 I'm letting the market confirm the breakout of 65 for the continuation. So then we had a momentum trade here, momentum trade here momentum trade there. So you had a slingshot, Momo, Momo, Momo. These are all arrows that fired and you have your audible alert go on on your computer. But that slingshot started all. Your entry was right there on the first uh, first break of 65. So your entry would be here. 
right there on the slingshot. Not the first green bar reversal. Because we want to get above 65 for momentum. We want to get below 40 on momentum. Okay? So my favorite setups using the one, if you want to look at the NQ, set up a 140-40 for stronger and weaker positions. Immediately check down to the 125-25, and you only need to look for two setups. You need to look for the slingshot or the momentum setup. The slingshot is basically an FZR momentum play. Even if they come down inside the zone, the slingshots still are effective because it can come down to the zone for a slingshot and still be good. Because I can come all the way down here as long as I get through 65 because I know I have a high probability of not getting a trend change. All right, so I have this in the PDF. A lot of examples. Works on all markets right across the board. It doesn't matter what markets. You know, it just doesn't matter. If I look at crude oil, one of my favorite markets yesterday, it was on fire yesterday. If I look at crude, It was in a strong position to take retracements. This is your strong position right there. When you are pegged, you had plenty of retracements all the way up. I mean, that was from 67.86 to 69.49, almost 60, what, 65 ticks. Same way here in the morning, you get the same type of opportunity. So I look at those first to let me know. And it doesn't matter what market you trade. Uh, works really good on the Russell 2000 also. Love the Russell 2000 if you trade the micros. Here this morning, you, be, you better be buying the Russell 2000 this morning. You better be buying it. If you're selling it, you're on the wrong side of the market. Look how my signal line is pegged on my 40. My zones are up. You want to look for buy retracements, momentum on smaller Rinkos. I like the 125.25 is one of my favorite charts because it doesn't give a lot of false signals. Um, but to each his own, how you want to do it. But you can see it's stronger, weaker position. You know, when you see these, uh, you know, yesterday at 9.30 at the open, we, we had some beautiful sell setups off that also. So, like I said, it doesn't matter what uh, market you look at. You can see if a market's in a stronger or weaker position. Gold does the same thing. Uh, it doesn't matter what markets I look at through here. You know, gold, same exact type of scenario. You know, gold this morning, you better be short in gold this morning. If you're not short in gold, you're on the wrong side of the market. Look at the 831 all the way to 830, what, 8. Look at that potential on gold. I mean, you had 913 move. I'm sorry, 913 all the way to potential down to 906. You know, so just a beautiful move on gold, and it kept you on the right side of the market. So, you know, that's what I'm going to be. I'm going to show you how to stay in a stronger, weaker position in the market.